A jar has 7 pink, 12 orange, 17 green, and 4 red marbles. What is the probability of drawing a red marble if a single marble is drawn at random, expressed as a percent? And if you want to, you can pause the video and try this now. And whenever you're ready, just unpause it and we'll go over the answer. Okay, so let me show you a formula here you can use for probability questions. And the formula, it might look a little bit different depending on which source you use or which book you look in, but it's basically going to look like this. Probability equals the number of favorable outcomes divided by the number of possible outcomes. So here it's asking, what is the probability of drawing a red marble? So the number of favorable outcomes is four. And then it says number of possible outcomes. So what's the number of possible outcomes? How do I get this? Well, what I do is I add up seven, 12, 17, and four. So seven plus 12 plus 17 plus four gives me 40. So to get the right answer here, I have to do four divided by 40. And in my calculator, that gives me 0.1. And 0.1 expressed as a percent is equal to B. So let me just clear something up here. So 0 0.01 is equal to 1%. And 0.1 is equal to 10%. So if you thought that answer choice C was the right answer here, know that you were on the right track for sure, especially if you need to do 4 divided by 40. So you were on the right track. But just keep in mind that 0.1 is equal to 10% and 0 0.01 is equal to 1%. So B is the correct answer here. So the next question is A to the 15 times A to the four equals which of the following? Is the answer A, B, C, or D? So let me give you a chance now if you'd like to pause the video, try to figure this out, take all the time you need, and then whenever you're ready, we'll go over the answer. So to get this question right, we have to remember our exponent rules. And the exponent rule that we need to know here is that when we're trying to multiply two terms that have the same base, what we can do is we can take that base and we can add up the exponents. Okay, so let me say that again here. So we have a to the 15 times a to the four. Since they both have a as the base, we can rewrite this as a to the 15 plus four. And 15 plus four is 19. So we would say that the answer here is a to the 19. So b is the correct answer. The question is negative two times negative five times negative four equals which of the following? Is the answer a, b, c, or d? So let me give you a chance now if you'd like to pause the video, try to figure this out, take all the time you need, and then whenever you're ready, just unpause the video and we'll talk about it. Okay, so the idea here is that if you multiply one negative number times another negative, it gives you a positive number. But then if you multiply that positive by a negative, you're gonna get a negative. Okay, so without doing any math here, I can already tell that the answer is gonna be a negative number. But let's do the math. So negative two times negative five is positive 10. Positive 10 times negative four is negative 40. So the correct answer here is D. So again, a negative times a negative gives us a positive. Then if I take that positive and multiply it by a negative, I get a negative. So the correct answer here is D negative 40. Which number below rounds to 42.65? Is the answer A, B, C, or D? Now's your chance if you'd like to to pause the video, try to figure this out, take all the time you need. And whenever you're ready, we'll go over the answer. Okay, so let me pull out answer choice A here so we can just do a quick review of place values. So the six here is in the tenths place, the four is in the hundredths place, and the one is in the thou thousandths place. It's a bit of a tongue twister sometimes to say. But anyway, the idea here is that for each answer choice, I wanna look at the number to the right of the four. And if this number here is a five or greater, it's gonna round up to 42.65. And if this number here in the thousandth place right, directly to the right of the four, if that number is smaller than five, then it's not gonna round up to 42.65. So in this case right here for 42.641, this does not round up to 42.65. So let's check B. So B is 42.643. And remember, I wanna see if this number is gonna round to 
So I want to look to the number directly to the right of the 4. And if it's 5 or greater, it's going to round to 42.65. But 3 is not a 5 or greater. 3 is smaller than 5, so this is not going to round to 42.65. Okay, so let me check C. 42.648. So again, the idea here is that I want to check the number in the thousandths place. All right, the number directly to the right of the 4. And this is a 5 or greater, right? It's an 8. So this is going to round to 42.65. So the correct answer here is C. I'm excited to announce that this video's champion shoutout goes out to a test taker who succeeded with math recently after being out of high school for 15 years. And the test taker listed some topics here, slope, finding x, quadratics, fractions, exponents, and circumferences. So just keep in mind that they might pop up on your test. And if you're watching this video right now, just keep in mind that if you just keep working hard and you just keep persevering, eventually you're gonna be done too and you'll have your own success story. A raised to the 20th power divided by A raised to the 6th power is the answer A, B, C, or D. So let me give you a chance now if you'd like to to pause the video, try to figure this out, take all the time you need, and whenever you're ready, just unpause the video and we'll talk about it. Okay, so there's an exponent rule here that we need to know to get this question right. So whenever you have a base raised to an exponent divided by the same base raised to an exponent, you can rewrite it as a to the 20 minus 6. Okay, so again, since we've got a to the 20 divided by a to the 6th, and they both have the same base, we can rewrite this as a to the 20 minus 6. And what is 20 minus 6? 20 minus 6 is 14. So the correct answer here is C. What is the slope of a straight line that contains the points 7, 11, and 9, 16? Now, just to save you some time since we're practicing, I put the formula for slope up here. It's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Just keep in mind, though, that on the real test, you'll want to go to the formula sheet and you'll want to pick out this formula if you have to do a slope calculation. So let me give you a chance now if you'd like to to pause the video, Try to figure this out, take all the time you need, and then whenever you're ready, we'll go over the answer. Okay, so what I recommend, first of all, is just labeling what we've got here. So we've got seven and we have 11. So the first number in the pair is always gonna be an X. So I'm gonna call this X1. And the second number in the pair is always gonna be a Y. So I'm gonna call the 11 Y1. So now let me come over here to nine and 16. Now we know that the first number in the pair is always gonna be an X. So I'm gonna call this X2. And we know that the second number in the pair is always gonna be a Y. So I'm gonna call this Y2. So now that I've labeled my X1, Y1, X2, and Y2, I'm gonna plug the numbers into the formula up here. So for Y2, I'm gonna plug in 16. And for Y1, I'm gonna plug in 11. So let me write that out here. So again, my y2 is 16, so I'm gonna write 16 minus 11. And that's over x2 minus x1. So what is my x2? Well, I know that my x2 is nine. So I'm gonna plug nine in here for x2. And then for x1, I'm gonna plug in seven. So seven is gonna go in here for x1. So I'm gonna have nine minus seven. Okay, so 16 minus 11 is five and nine minus seven is two. So the correct answer here is D, five over two.